Hi, I'm Sarissa Rhodes, and I was asked to do Day 15 Devotion for 22 for 22. I wanted to start off by sharing a little bit about myself. I'm a therapist, a wife, and a mama to my seven-year-old son. I'm participating in the fast, but I have to say it's not easy for me. I have a lot of habits, and they're not all good, but they're definitely ingrained in me. One of them is wasting time scrolling Facebook. I can do it in every spare minute for a long time. And so that was one of the things I'm fasting. I decided that I was only going to use social media for these 22 days when something is directed toward me, such as I was tagged or I got a direct message. And the only reason I'm even allowing that is because I do communicate a lot with friends and family out of state through Facebook, as well as a lot of groups that way. I also decided for 22 days, I was gonna stop unnecessary spending. This is another thing that doesn't come easy for me. I like to shop, I like to spend, and I like to pretend I need things that I don't need. And lastly, unnecessary eating out. Here's the thing. I could have said I wanted to just give up eating out. Maybe I even should have, but again, fasting's hard. And I'm not yet ready to give up my three meetings a week that take place in restaurants. <laughs> so instead, I chickened out and decided I wouldn't do unnecessary eating out. So if you're new to fasting or if you're finding fasting hard or you've just never done it or you feel like you just don't know what to choose, you're not the only one. One thing I recommend is think about something that distracts you and start there. Maybe even pray and ask God what you should fast and ask for help. Ask for help from friends, family, and from God. You don't have to do it alone. In fact, I highly suggest encouraging a friend or family member near or far to join you in 22 for 22. So for day 15, the scripture we were given was Colossians 1.16. Now, one thing to know is that Colossians was written by the Apostle Paul. One thing I love about Paul is that he is probably one of the most popular apostles known. He wrote most of the New Testament, but for a good portion of his life, he executed the early believers of Jesus. He hated Christians until he literally ran in and had a conversation with the resurrected Jesus. It changed everything. And he went on to write most of the Bible. He wasn't a hypocrite, but he got new information he was receptive to it and he changed his view. This is an important message I feel like everybody could use and remember in today's world. As we get new information, we do better. Be open to new information, be open to knowledge. It's okay to question and to change. It doesn't make you a hypocrite, it makes you a human. Now to start, I'm gonna be reading from the New Living Translation, something that I feel like is easy to understand and definitely what I was looking for when I purchased the Bible. So Colossians 1.16, New Living Translation says, for through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities and the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. When I read this, I think of the awe. And what I mean by that is all the things that God created that is just beyond comprehension. The mountains, the rivers, he created it all, created everything. Things we can't imagine. When you see a shooting star, he created it. Sunset, sunrise, newborn babies, all of it. I hope I never lose that awe when I think of these. Prior to script, this scripture, it talks about how Christ is the visible image of an invisible God. God created everything and sent his son so that we'd be able to see him in the things that we do, be able to see him loving people, see him giving forgiveness. This is huge. Colossians was written by Paul while he was in jail. 
he was writing to a group of people, he first thanked them for their faithfulness. He acknowledged how hard it is to be faithful at times. And 116 is part of a poem he wrote about the Messiah, about Jesus and what he created. A lot of Paul's writing is about people questioning faith, people struggling, Paul getting mad and frustrated with people's lack of faith or questioning, his own questioning. That is reassuring to me because I at times have a lot of questions. I at times struggle with my faith. And so this is helpful with that. When we come across trials in life, when things are hard, I want you to remember that God created the mountains and the rulers and the kingdoms. He created it all. And if he can do that, he can certainly help us with our small day-to-day things that we run into. My prayer for us is that we come together as a church as we are. We do this challenge gene thing. We fast, which is not common in today's world. We give up something that we enjoy so that we get stronger in the end. Please join me. Dear Lord, I pray that we always remember what you can and have done. I pray that we always remember how amazing you are and the things that you've created. And that if you can create all these amazing things, surely you can help us. Lord, fasting is uncomfortable. It's not common to us today and it's hard. Lord, I just pray that you help us and support us. Lord, I pray that maybe you'll give us a name of somebody that we should reach out to, a name of somebody that we should invite to the 22 for 22. Lord, I pray for our community. I pray for our church. And I'm just so thankful for this opportunity for everybody near and far to do this one thing together. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions or want to know more, check out fplive.org. In the top, there's a link for 22 for 22. Go ahead and pass that on to somebody. Remember, fasting's not easy. It's hard. There are times that I grab my phone and start scrolling before I even realize what I'm doing. But remember, you're not in this alone and you don't have to be perfect. Thank you.